The Sparf, or most commonly known as the Galaglass Axe, was a type of weapon that was actually used by the Galaglass from the 13th to the 17th century. The term word sparf is an actually an old English word meaning axe. The Galaglass were known to have used various styles of axes throughout the centuries. First starting from the 13th century, they would use a type of Dane axe design, of which was commonly used by their Nordic cousins, and as well, even their Nordic grandfathers of the North Scale region of Scotland. The Danax would be used in a form swinging type motion. However, there are many accounts that even state that they as well even use the axe in some forms of thrusting, sometimes into points of mail, almost to damage their opponent before weakening them and as well killing them in the process. By the 14th century, the blades started protruding into that form, which would actually allow more thrusts and cutting designs. This design actually started to stay mostly with this said Sparth, especially up into the later centuries. Many accounts even state that even during the 17th century, as you see in this image here, the Sparth had started to actually become more of like that of a glaive, or as well, also commonly known as a bardiche. Some historians even start to state that this is not an actual Sparth, but probably a glaive. But I'd like to hear your all accounts on this one. This design would actually be used by the Galaglass from the 14th to the 17th century. However, some accounts even state that they started to fall out of it sometime around the 15th century. Especially when the Galaglass started to adopt a newer design during the 15th century known as the Irish Axe. This design actually was commonly used by the Galaglass from the 15th to the 17th century. However, there are some accounts that even state that these were used in the late 14th century. Needless to say though, it's still widely unknown. This style of sparf was actually known to have sometimes a form of curve or as well a flattened blade, and as well with a protruding style of the blade upward. This would actually cause more heft and as well damage to their opponent, especially when it comes to his form of swing. There are also many accounts that even state that during the time of the 15th century, this style of axe was actually responsible for dick killing many warriors on battlefields especially splitting and open heads. However, other accounts also state that this design was even responsible for actually breaking the necks of their opponents, mainly from just the force blunt impact of the said weapon. In wider forms, this was actually the most common of the said Galaglass axes, as this was actually highly favored and prized by many Galaglass warriors, as it was existentially known as the Light Axe, or Light Head Splitters. As many accounts do state that even though this weapon had only a 7 inch style blade, it still actually managed to cause enough damage to actually slaughter men in the thousands. As the Galaglass were known to use this variation in style of axes, even up into the 17th century. As this was probably the most common variation by this point. However, by the time of the late 15th century, the Galaglass started to adopt a newer design. Which would later become known as the Heavy Sparth, or the Noble Sparth pretty much used by Galaglass nobles, or higher up chieftains, the Galaglass or of Irish countrymen. This style of axe was of a heavier style build of blade, and which was of 12 inch style flattened edge. There are even accounts that even state that this style of axe was even responsible for killing many amounts of cavalrymen, both man and beast slaughtered to the lamb. Many accounts even state that even if the horse had been armored, their necks would have been broken, and as well the legs of the rider would be split in half. One English noble by the name of Sir Henry John de Mon stated the ferocity of the Galaglass on the battlefield with their two-handed weapons cleared a path of men and beasts. Nothing was left in their wake but hues of dead bodies left in the scorching sun. The Galagos axe would be used in different variations in ways of fighting. There are some accounts that actually state that even when swinging the axe, the Galagos would use in a type of form a circular swing. This type of motion actually follows to the form of a type of ballet, if you would, of blades, using the weight and counter system to actually use it as an impact just to exorbitant weapon. In other words, if one was hit by the blade of the spar, and badly injured, the Galaglass could then use his weapon to either trip or pull down his opponent, and then deliver the finishing blow upon them, mainly by aiming for their head. As there are many accounts that actually state the Galaglass had actually used a different variation of designs of way of fighting, 
but most accounts actually state that they actually went first for their head of their opponent. If the opponent's head was actually covered, say, with a helmet, there are accounts that state that even the head would actually be bashed inward. And as well, the warrior would have been so badly disoriented by the impact that he would not know the next blow would probably come to his neck or any other part of his body. As there have been many archaeological discoveries that of which have been discovered in parts of Ireland and in such, many of the warriors were found with their necks broken and their skulls bashed in, almost as though that they had been hit by a certain style of weapon. But the impact was not from a mace, as many weapons experts in the medieval warfare actually even started to look even further into the studs of injuries on the bones and discovered that it had to be caused by a type of heavy blade. It had to be done with some sort of impact style weapon, one in which a sword would not be able to do if the opponent was wearing his helmet. This leads many to believe that it actually was caused by the axe, not by the sword. There have also been many accounts that even state that even legs have been hewed from their opponents. Other injuries that of which had been caused by the sparf were even stated by none other than Sir Joseph Matal, Lord of the Pale, who stated that the impact blows of the sparf was so dangerous that men had broken limbs just for lifting their shields in order to protect themselves. But the single blow of the axe was so dangerous that men would lose their arms just from breaking of bone and muscle. The Galaglass were so feared in Ireland that they were highly prized because of this axe, which is why the Sparf was the most common weapon of the Galaglass warrior throughout the centuries. Upon using the various styles of weaponry, we can actually understand that the Sparf was kept being used throughout the major centuries, but from the 15th to the 17th century, these type of weapons were the most commonly seen and remembered. But what do y'all think? Do you think the Sparf is a sad, forgotten weaponry of history that needs to be remembered, or it's too highly prized of a weapon? Let me know in the comments below. And as well, y'all, hopefully y'all can check out our more of our videos that are coming up soon on the Gallo Glass, as we are soon to finish them up from the 15th to the 17th century. So hopefully soon we will be getting them done, and go back to a variation of other videos related to other points in history. But as well, a big shout out to none other than my fellow YouTuber, Thane Thrand, as he will be receiving a 15th to 17th century Gala Glass Irish Axe, of which this design is highly remembered by many. And in such is the one probably the most lightest and deadliest being used by the Gala Glass. Seeing to the fact it had been used for three whole centuries, so this one will probably be the best one that he could probably end up using. As there are many accounts that state that even necks were broken even when the opponent was wearing his helmet. So Thrand, if you're listening to this, you might want to take notes. For when you test out your axe. And hopefully soon we will see Thrand test out his axe, not just on in the ballistic gel heads, but as well even arms and shields and legs. Of the ballistic gel dummies that he uses. Because I would actually most likely love to see him do various videos with this weapon. Because one, this weapon has been known to break bone underneath the armor, and as well, even plate armor could not stop the blow of this weapon, especially to the limbs, such as the legs and arms. Mainly, even if one wore a shield, there are so many accounts that actually state that the shield would have been useless due to the impact. So, yeah. Thrand, I hope you're listening, and hopefully you get your axe very soon, because this is probably going to be a really cool video to watch. So, when it does come out, y'all, I'll make sure to put it in a link down below when it actually does come up, because I actually can't wait to see this one. And as well, if any of y'all don't know anything about Thane Thrand, recently he is needing our help to actually save his home. So I highly recommend checking him out on Spotify and such to help him out. I will put links down below for where you can help him out in. As well, I will leave several links and more information down below in the description for any more information on the Sparth Axe throughout history. Anyways guys, this has been Celtic Templar. Hope to see you all in the next one. Like and subscribe for more, and if you want me to talk about any weapon in history, let me know in the comments below. So that way, I can actually take a look more into them. But, hopefully see you all very soon. Have a great day, y'all.